the other parts of the world. We explained that we use a mediation or arbitration first if we have a problem with another company. We should put in the contract where the case is going to be tried. That's called a jurisdiction. If we can't agree on a country, we can use a neutral country, for example California. Californian law, state law in the US. We said that for patents, we should make sure that our product has the correct patent in the country, and we should check the country's uh, law about intellectual property and patents before we decide our strategy about how to enter the market or our strategy about pricing. So we're talking more specifically today about marketing laws. So we just finished here the last time. So if I go to Australia, I can find that a cigarette packet has a picture of some decayed lungs. So a really disgusting picture right on the box. Because of the law of Australia, they have to put that on the box. So actually Australia was involved in a court case with the cigarette companies and Uruguay too. But in other countries there is no problem. The cigarette box is just normal. So that's just an example of how we have different marketing laws, especially for things like alcohol and cigarettes, things that could be bad for your health. So we have laws about promotion, product development, labeling. So promotion, you can't advertise alcohol before 10 p.m. at night, right? Labeling, we talked about the cigarette one. Pricing, sometimes the product has to have a certain price if it's necessary. And how it's distributed. So, <clears throat> we can see that some countries have few laws and poor enforcement. Others have detailed complicated rules that are strictly enforced. For example, Sweden, France, Canada, China, the EU. So for example, in one country, can you say that my product is the best product in the world? Are you allowed to say that in Korea? My product is the best one? On the TV? You have to, first of all, you have to do some experiment and prove that your product was better than the other products. Right? You have to do an experiment or science. You must have a scientific basis. So some countries are stricter about this, like Sweden or France. Right? You should have done research and have some very scientific basis for everything you say in your advertisement. But other countries are not so strict. You can say more general things. So. <coughs> Cyber law is uh, more important these days. So we have, do you understand the main name? The main name is the name of your website. Like uh, YouTube or Facebook. So usually a company can only buy a name that's already, already registered. So uh, we have taxes. So, Amazon, and did you ever buy anything with Amazon? Yes. <clears throat> yes. What country did you buy? Mm, UK. Hmm? UK. Did you buy from the US? No, no, from the UK. From the UK, that's okay, right? But problem for Amazon and eBay is when they're selling, if I want to buy something from Amazon from the US, I have to pay import tax. Or eBay, it's the same, I should pay import tax. So, even they are selling the TV programs or the videos or those kind of things, they can't sell them from the US to another country. So, it says if you do some international shipping, it's your own, uh, it's your own uh, responsibility to check about the tax, paying the taxes. Okay? So, I want to use the TV service from the US pay for it, but it's not on Amazon, but they don't allow me, because I'm in another country. 
So am I going to pay the taxes, the VAT and all those things? So this is an issue for some of the companies these days. Then uh, we see that if the e-commerce seller advertises in the consumer's country, then the consumer's country here is the case. So if I buy something from Amazon US, it's advertised in the US, so therefore the case will be heard in the US if there is a problem. Of course, uh, we have Alibaba now, is uh, also in China, it's a very big company. So if you buy some, Alibaba is more business to business, right? So if you buy something from Alibaba, then you should remember that the case will be decided in China because it was advertised in China. Can you explain what is uh, Alibaba, Chinese students? They have two kinds of uh, website to sell, uh, to sell uh, the goods. Uh, the one is Taobao and the other is Tmall. And uh, it's a different stage of uh, the products. Uh, uh, maybe uh, we can buy some uh, low uh, uh, some low quality but cheap uh, products in Taobao and uh, uh, some uh, brand products in Timor and uh, uh, and we can pay online uh, like use just uh, I mean, Ali Alipay okay so it was listed on the New York Stock Exchange recently it, yes. it uh, raised billions of dollars right yeah. from investors uh, so Digital signatures, the legal acceptance is becoming more widespread. So we can make a kind of a digital uh, signature also we can use these days for scanning the documents and sending. So let's discuss some questions. So I'll discuss with your partner. What are the main differences between common law and civil or code law? And where are they practiced? What should you do before uh, making a contract to protect yourself? Why would a company prefer mediation or arbitration? And how should we protect our intellectual property? So I'll discuss those questions with the partner. Be discussing, right? You should be talking together, yeah. asking him and discussing.
주된 뭐지? 그들이 어디서 주로, 주로 행하냐 거기 어디서 주로 사용되는지 이거 슬라이드 41에 있고 이게 되게 쉬운데 이거 읽으면 되는 거야 So we need to protect our intellectual property. So what do we need to do? Anybody else? What should we do to protect our intellectual property? We, before we yes. take it, we'll create patents and trademarks, right? Register the patent and trademark in a different country. Okay? Find the right way to enter the market. Okay, so then we have some internet tasks. We want to find out for different countries what legal system do they use. So we can check that on the CIA website. Okay, so if you want to go to the link, you can uh, just click. You have to make the full screen, make the PPT the full screen, okay? Or else copy and paste. Okay, what does the PCT help with? Go to this website. Okay, what does the ICC arbitration provide? 
So answer these questions. Okay? An internet task. You can do it together with one computer if you want, or you can do it. So in the CIA world backup, we're going to look for Bulgaria, then look for the legal system. You have the full screen, you can just click on the link and it should open. If you scroll down, you can see the system, right? Here, legal system. Twitch. 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 Two more minutes to find the answer to these questions. Click on the link. Office with their 
Okay? So we have this is the World Intellectual Property Organization, right? Famous organization for IP. They have this system that you can use for registering. How many countries? 148, right? Brazil is not in Crypto. Mark is not sorry, uh, uh, some countries are not included, right? So we can see countries here. Uh, you can read more about that yourself. What about the last question, the ICC? Um, Yi Jin Yang? Yes. What does the ICC have for uh, Arbitration, mediation, expert. Okay, so we can see here the list of things, right? It has arbitration, it has medi mediation, okay? It has in rules, suggested clauses, procedure, filing a request, cost of payment. So they can help you to find an arbitration person. Look, they can even give you a cost calculator, how much it probably will cost, right? There's an international court of arbitration. Okay, so we can read about arbitration and mediation more here. As we, it's getting bigger, so you can see they have some conferences and so on going on. So, do you have any questions about uh, law? I guess for your marketing plan, you also need to check marketing law in that country. Depending on your product, is there any marketing law which is going to affect your product, right? Do you need to register your IP? Okay. Um, what kind of legal system does the country have? So if you have no questions, then let's move on to the regional environment. So we are just got, we talked about uh, the environment, cultural environment, the economic, political and legal environment. So we're going to finish talking about the environment on the market. The last thing we're going to do is just have a look at different regions in the world. So talking generally about those different regions. Okay? So just discuss with your partner. Can you name uh, five emerging economies or developing economies in the world. Can you name five emerging economies? Okay, then next, can you name five transition economies? Transition economy, not as strong as the emerging economy. Weaker, more based on agriculture. These days, we don't say third world anymore. Usually we say transition economy. More correct way to say that phrase, right? The economy is in transition, it's changing from agriculture to industry. Can you name five of those economies? Okay, uh, Jin Jin Yang? Yeah. Where is Jin Jin Yang? Yeah. Yes. Uh, can you name five emerging economies? Uh, in Asia? Uh, Anywhere? Uh, Hungary, 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 India, India, Argentina, Iran, Turkey. Okay. Uh, you saw? Can you name five tran transition economies? Transition economies is weaker economy than emerging economies, mainly based on agriculture. Agriculture is farming is the main 
Can you name three? Three transition economies? India. India is an emerging economy. So if we look at Africa, we can find many transition economies like the Ivory Coast, right? Or Ethiopia, Somalia, okay? Uh, so what is the objective currently of developing countries, also called emerging economies, okay? So they are industrializing or industrialization. And most countries, they want economic growth. So China is a good example of economic growth. China has been growing at about 10%, okay? If China grow, economy grows at 10% a year, then we can have better education. Why? Because the government has more money to pay for education, okay? Better and more effective government. Elimination of social inequities, okay? Improvements in moral and ethical responsibilities, and so on. So most countries are taking GDP. If you want to improve our GDP, produce more things, then we can help ourselves so in the social way too. So we can see that privatization is becoming the norm and a major economic phenomenon in industrialized as well as developing countries. So uh, we had a kind of grand experiment in the world between communism and capitalism during the 20th century, okay? And basically capitalism won. So as the fallout of that, countries which were formerly uh, communist countries in the 70s and 80s, 90s, they did some privatization, okay? Changing the government of companies into private companies and opening up their market to foreign investors and so on. Okay, so we're thinking about uh, China, India, Russia. Okay, big economies with a lot of consumers and now their main aim is uh, economic growth. So marketing is also important. It fits between the productive capacity and consumer demand. So for example, marketing can also be useful for social issues. For example, uh, in Africa, if you take just uh, some small amount of fish oil, a lot of people are anemic. Do you understand anemia? Anemia is when you don't have enough iron in your blood. You don't have much energy and you can feel weak. Do you understand iron? You get iron from eating broccoli and red meat, those kind of things, right? So people who don't have enough money to pay for enough food, they can get great benefit by eating some fish oil, which is high in iron and other vitamins. It's really cheap, but they don't eat it, right? Why not? Right? That's a, it's, a, it's a very wide question, but marketing could help with that, right? If those people knew that this product it could help them to have more energy, right, and work harder, do better in school, and so on, then they, they would probably buy that. Okay, so marketing can match productive capacity and consumer demand. So <clears throat> marketing is a critical element in utilizing production resulting from economic growth. So we have consumers who want products, and we, we want to produce things to grow our economy. So marketing is matching our production with the consumer, okay? and distributing the products. So we have to make sure that our marketing efforts is appropriate for the circumstances. Uh, for example, in Africa, where the population are say we have 50% illiterate, or a high illiteracy rate, where people can't read, people use a lot of pictures, right? But you have to be careful too, because one company, there was some baby food. They put a picture of the baby on the baby food. But in that country, the people thought that whatever is in the picture is in the product. 
The picture shows the product, not who the product is for. So people some people were shocked. They thought, what? They're selling babies as food, right? So this was a big problem for the company. Okay? Baby food manufacturer. So you have to be careful. Okay? You have to make your uh, marketing tailored means to fit each circumstance. So uh, let's check this link here. We can see that illiteracy rates for 15 year olds. Okay? And we can also check here. So just you can click on the link so we can see in developing countries sometimes we have a issue with illiteracy, right? So here we can see illiteracy, it's from 2003. So the data is uh, a little bit old. But, uh, here they, uh, the this, this reason this website is nice is because at the bottom they tell you where did they get the information. They got the information from UNESCO. Do you know UNESCO? Okay. So you can click on that and you can go to the page, right? So they also have a map here. You can see on the map where the highest rates of illiteracy are. So if we go to South Korea, just 1.9%, right? These countries is almost a 0% and everybody can read, right? Yeah. Brazil is 12%. They have the Amazon jungle, for example, right? Argentina, 3%. Democratic Republic of Congo, 35%. Mm -hmm. uh, so, China, maybe Western China, 13%. Chinese characters is hard to learn, right? I think. So, you can also check these other links later yourself if you want. So, when we're looking at uh, the potential in a developing country. We have to look at two areas. First of all, how developed is the market? And second of all, the demand. Do people want to buy consumer products? So first, uh, we have to look at the development. If the economy is more developed, then we need more marketing functions, and we need more sophisticated and specialized institutions to perform the marketing functions. So we have, if we are selling, uh, if the market is not well developed, for example Nokia, do you know Nokia? They decided to sell just the old phone, cell phone, really, not smartphone, just old cell phone, in some countries where the economy is not that well developed, okay? Then they don't have that much sophisticated and specialized uh, marketing function, right? Just for a general one. <clears throat> so we have to look at the demand. So we have different markets. We have the agricultural sector, the high income sector, or urban sector, transitional sector. Slum, do you understand slum? What does slum mean? Yes, yeah, so around the city, often they don't have permission to build a house. They just build the house anyway. In Brazil, we have the favelas in Argentina. Around Buenos Aires, millions of people live in slums, right? It's like a poor housing place, where they didn't have permission, but they built the housing. So, uh, for example, when McDonald's went to India, do you think that McDonald's thought there would be demand for their product in this sector or this sector in India? Do you think there's demand for McDonald's in the agricultural or rural area in India? No, right? What about in the slums? Do people have enough money to buy Big Mac meals? No. No, right? So when McDonald's went to India, they just targeted this high income sector. So they set up their restaurant in the high income sector of the city. Okay? And they only set up their restaurant in the city. They didn't set up any restaurants in the countryside, for example. So we just have to be aware of 
the different type of market inside each country in the different areas. So, anyway, we have a, a wide population of the emerging market. Just between China and India, it's about 2.5 billion people, right? A lot of people. So, and their income is going up, expanding. So as the country is developing, the incomes are changing, population concentration are changing, people are moving from the countryside to the city. People expect a better life. They're spending more money for buying more cars, right? Higher standard of living. Uh, new infrastructures like train ways and highways. And also more investments in social capital like hospitals and education. Okay? So there is opportunities for companies in all of these areas. Okay? If you're a health provider, right? Then in India and China they're investing more money in the hospitals and so on. So if you're selling some product for the hospital, okay, there are some opportunities there. So uh, especially in China, the government has a large amount of savings, right? And the government is still very involved in the economy in China. So they do a lot of infrastructure projects and investing money in new uh, health and education area. So when incomes rise, new demand is generated at all income levels. So it, it could be so. So this kind of sector or this kind of sector, they will want soap. You understand soap? Soap is very cheap, right? Then cars, maybe this sector more so, for cars. So anyway, new demand is being generated in uh, the emerging economies for all classes of products. Especially, uh, we can see, you mightn't think it, but luxury products, right? In China and Russia have been the main growth area for luxury companies like Chanel or Gucci over the last uh, 10 years, right? They're fastest growing markets, even sports cars, that kind of thing. Because you have a lot of very wealthy people too, too who are making uh, money, they want to spend on those areas. Also because of uh, people in China like the symbols, symbolism. So they like the symbol of the, uh, the status symbol. So what about in Russia? Do people like uh, luxury brands in Russia? Are they important, do you think? Are people impressed if you have luxury? Very impressed if you have luxury brand? Is it growing in, in Russia? Do you think? Can you see more stores of the luxury brand? Yes. Yes, so they focus on big cities, yes. What about in China? Are luxury brands growing in China? Uh, yeah.